Hey guys, welcome back to The Pulse here with Willie and Al. How's it going today, Al? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, what you missed beforehand, uh, sorry, we, we took a little while to get started today. We, uh, I, I want to apologize because I, I sent Shane, I think, off the deep end today a little bit. Uh, as you guys can see, Peyton Manning is in the background, and that started a discussion. We mm -hmm. started with Peyton Manning, and then I... Uh, I talked about uh, our Lord and Savior, uh, Thomas Brady, you know, uh, and then it just kind of escalated from there. So, yeah, so uh, which culminated we're fired up today. Yeah, which culminated in him triggering me by saying that uh, the Colts lost two playoff games to North Turner, which is uh, still does not feel right. So um, do you think that's the uh, the 2000s equivalent of Brandon Staley? No, it feels like it. No, it no, no, like no, 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 no. No, Norv's not that bad. So okay, but All right. you, uh, you did lose a playoff game to Billy Bullock. Yeah, but still not Brandon Staley, right? Okay. <laughs> but guys, welcome back. Uh, this is our 48th episode that we have of the Pulse. Uh, today is our not long to wait episode, so we we had to get back to a good title here, and the reason being. The people voiced their concerns that they were not happy that we didn't have titles for the last two. So, uh, this is just to let you know you've been heard and uh, loud and clear. So, uh, before we jump into things, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and like the video. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a longer one today. we got some serious stuff we want to get into with, uh, before training camps get started. And we have that MLB craze kind of with the All-Star break coming up here. Um, but as uh, Al had mentioned, we do have a guest appearance on, on the show today with uh, Mr. Peyton Manning. Uh, he, which, whoa, 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 how dare you? How dare you, first off? Um, secondly, uh, he chose us over Pat McAfee today. So, um, Pat, please forgive us. Uh, don't sue us. Uh, we'll have him back next week. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, and you could just say what you want, uh, chime in when you need to, but, uh, uh, for major league baseball, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we, I wanted to start with a nice triggering topic for Al today. Uh, Chris oh, Sale. Yes. This was coming. Chris God Sale, because, because should we roll the clip back? Do we need to, uh, do we even have that? Can we, can we roll the clip back of, Oh, Chris Sale, like you're going to enjoy him getting injured and starting two games and, spending the rest of the year on the il but guess what uh he inks yeah. his 12th his league leading 12th win of the season uh and i just want to know your thoughts on this because and we'll get to it in a minute but, but because your team could really benefit from having maybe 12 wins from a starter okay uh, first of all look had he been playing for the red sox this year it wouldn't be 12 wins chris I'm going to tell you the Chris Sale story, how this typically goes. Um, it goes one of two ways. Either and he will play until about June mm -hmm. and then get hurt. And then really just never – he always, like, talks about coming back. And there's the talk of it, but it never happens. Okay. And they shut him down for the year. Or what ha would happen is he would, uh, he would get hurt a lot of times at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And then, like, he would miss, like, the first half of the next season. And uh, then you would get Chris Sale around July. Huh. Um, he'd pitch for about a month. Okay. And then, um, you know, inevitably some weird injury, like mm -hmm. the time he was biking from rehab <laughs> and hurt his shoulder and then was done for the season. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad that you guys got a year of actual Chris Sale help. It is, um, it's too bad that you could not pair that with a really good Spencer Strider season. And Acuna, too. And yeah, maybe Matt Olson that, not hitting 13 home runs. Yeah. Well, he hit all of them last year. So, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, it, but it is it is good to see. It is good to see him, like, doing well and, like, excelling at Atlanta. Um, you know, it sucks that it's not for us. Um, I think that's a big thing. And not to rub salt on the wound and stuff, but, like, there's nothing that feels worse than you know, getting a free agent signing where a guy comes in who is established, who has played well, who, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't he win a Cy Young before he came to, to Boston? Yeah. Yeah, and, and like, yeah. so you know what you're getting in that guy coming over, or at least you, you can conceptualize what it is that they're going to bring to your team, and then that doesn't happen, and then they go somewhere else and do it, and it's just really frustrating to see that. I feel like I see that in the NFL off, often, and maybe 
more in the NFL, I think it's kind of system based where some systems really benefit and, and work to play your strengths where I don't know. And in, in baseball, it's sad to kind of see that, right? Like you don't want to see a player that you know is good, go somewhere else and kill it when they could have been killing it for you. Sorry, I misspoke. Um, he never has won a Cy Young. He <gasps> did finish second the uh, first year he played for the Red Sox. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. he was with who? The White Sox before that? Yeah. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like he even if he didn't win a Cy Young, he was still pretty good there uh, during that time. But He was um, always in the mix. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the reason I wanted to bring him up, too, and it's kind of interesting how you had brought up uh, Spencer Strider. Like, if they had him there kind of to pair with that, Freed's been pitching well, even though his record doesn't seem great. He's still been having a good year. Um, and then to have Charlie Morton as, like, your fourth starter, you know, that's a pretty solid rotation you've got there, right? And, like... Well, Charlie Morton's 402 years old at this point. Well, yeah, but, but even even so, having a veteran like that, they've got... Who yeah. is it? Reynaldo Lopez. He's he's actually pitching pretty well, too, this year. Um, but I just... I don't know. that, And I know it's personal because it's the Braves, but they just won't die. And I just, like... I keep seeing this clip from Gladiator with Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix. Like, you simply won't die. And, like, the Phillies are yeah. really killing it this year. They are hoping for the Braves to just fall out. But Anthopoulos, he's going to make some moves here within the next two weeks. Um, and, I, you know, I'm kind of... I don't of, think that he does. Really? I, I, huh. why, I, I, I just don't... Like, all you need to do is make the playoffs. Yeah. That's all you need to do. And... But that's not good I enough understand. for their organization, you realize, too. Like, they've made the playoffs every year. What they want is a World Series win. And, like, that's yeah. – I don't know. It, it just – And the thing is, is like, they're four and a half up right now on the first wild card slot. Yep. Yeah. Like, if, if, I'm, if I'm Atlanta, like, I don't – you know who you have coming back next year. Yep. You have a top-of-the-rotation guy in Strider, a, a former MVP in Acuna. Yep. Like – I maybe you add around the fringes a little bit, but like I don't know if I really tinker with this too much. Well, yeah, they like, they do have a lot of good, and the the good thing is, uh, and a lot of people don't really consider this when top guys get injured, but someone else has to come in and fill that position. So that's a lot of experience yeah. gained during that time, and that becomes invaluable later uh, when you need to rotate guys in and give guys rest. Uh, yeah. So. I don't know. Spe speaking of just making the playoffs and stuff, uh, I noticed your Red Sox, they're nine games above 500. I had to change this because it was 10, but they did, that felt too good. We needed to go yeah. back to nine, but there's six and a half back in the division. Um, you know, I, I look at that and we joke around about Chris Sale, you know, being there and stuff. But, like, I know you've been somewhat skeptic skeptical of them this year and what you thought they were going to do, but when... I don't know. What what would you say if I could show you a path to the playoffs through them? And I know exactly where it's going to come from. I They are a team that I just I feel like are they just keep they're kind of playing above their weight class this year. <laughs> yeah. And I and I I think that's really great. Mm -hmm. And I as, as somebody that has watched them or listened to them night in and night out now for like three months, like they, uh, things that I do appreciate is they do have a knack for the dramatics. Like they, like no lead is safe against them. Like right. they, they, sh they grind, they come back. Like, uh, and if the playoffs were to start today, they would have the second wild card spot. Like that's, that's where we're at right now. And yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a dogfight the second half of the season because you have I mean, you have Houston coming up, you have Minnesota who's like are weirdly good this year. And I don't like I don't understand that either. Mm -hmm. Like the AL Central has two teams that are really good, and that's I can't remember the last time that's happened. Seattle's hanging around. Houston is like Houston after that miserable start they had is you're two games back of Seattle right now. Yeah, we're going to talk about them in a minute here because that's, you know, what Houston's doing is pretty impressive. But Texas isn't far out either, man. And Texas is only six and a half out of the division. And, like, they're the they're the, the defending champs. 
And like, I know you still have the statement, like, until you unseat them, they're still the champs and stuff. But, like, that's still a... You had mentioned they basically ran back the same squad from last year. So if they're able to catch fire, it doesn't need to be that aggressive for them to make the playoffs. Um, you know, I know I think they're, like, three, four games under five hundred right now. Um, but they'll they'll have a good chance to be able to come back. So... Um, I'm just saying with the Yankees flailing, like their, their path is being forged for them, uh, in Boston. And I think they, they have a young enough team where they may be able to sneak in. And like you said, keep playing people tough. There's a chance for them to be able to make I think, it. I, I will say, I want to just talk for a minute about so, uh, some of the real positives of this team this year. Like yeah. Alex Cora, uh, Alex Cora is been a really good manager for us since we've we've gotten him and mm-hmm. like this team needed veteran leadership from the from a managerial uh view and he's given him that and i yeah. it's been really nice to see and he puts like he he's a guy who could do a lot with a little and he just keeps putting guys in the right way to succeed and also uh jared duran as well yeah first time all-star dude mm-hmm. has just been straight killing them this year and like the Sox are doing this thing where, like, they're kind of beating teams with speed. Like, they're stealing a lot of bases. They're hitting a lot of triples for some reason, which is, like, that's weird. <laughs> that's rare, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, Duran has, like, 10 triples already and, like, 20 steals. You know what I mean? Like, it's just – it's an odd it's an odd team this year um, that's, like, giving me hope. Mm-hmm. But I also – I have seen this before – and I know, and being a Red Sox fan means like you're kind of used to disappointment a lot of, pre 2004. So I know what this looks like. They're gonna, they're gonna, we're gonna get all get hope, and then like hopefully they don't fade down the stretch. But I, I, I've just seen this too many times, so I'm I'm prepared for it. Yeah. And also, ownership isn't gonna like make any deals at the deadline because they're too cheap to pay anybody. So yeah. like. Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of the interesting thing. So they're going to kind of see what they've got. And then who knows, maybe they're able to make a move or two in the offseason to kind of bridge that gap. Because this is a, a division that, at least in my mind, seems like it's going to be pretty competitive. You're lucky Tampa Bay and Toronto really haven't been that good, um, you know, recently, especially this year. Uh, but but seeing, like, the, you know, the Yankees are going to probably be there again next year based on the talent on that roster. Baltimore doesn't seem like they're going away. Um, so Boston's going to have to make some moves. I think the Yankees are going to stick around. I, I think I know they're in a really bad slump. Yeah. And it is, it's it's kind of concerning. But, um, I mean, not concerning for me. I love to see it. Yeah. It makes me happy. Okay. But, um, Hear that, Roger? Ta- yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do have enough talent, though, like, they're going to figure this out, I think. Yeah. Well, they and that's, I mean, you're absolutely right. Like, the Yankees are in absolute free fall mode. And, uh, you know, we we always do our notes a day in advance and stuff. But uh, based off of yesterday before they had played the games, in their last 23, they were 6-17. and 17. Um, And yeah. I just, that's, that's just really, really bad. I mean, they were up in the division. They were the top team in baseball. And then all of a sudden, things started to turn around. Um, and conversely, like you look at other teams that you had mentioned, like the Astros, like they've closed the gap on the Mariners now, um, converse to the Yankees, right? Like a 22 game look back. So, you know, one less, but they're 16 and six over that time. Um, the, almost the complete opposite record, right? So it's, it, it just, when you look at that, it's amazing how teams can go on these runs. And even looking back a few years ago, I remember the Braves had like a ridiculous, july and august it was like halfway through july and then august they lost like five games combined and it was like oh okay well they are on fire no wonder they're going to go into the postseason and blow teams away like this is what they what they're doing right now so um i think i'd much rather my opinion be in the yankees position right now and going through this slump now than going through that at the end of July, beginning of August, as you're trying to make it into the playoffs. Uh, yeah. Because it becomes very, very difficult at that time uh, to really pump the brakes and, and redirect the course at that point. Um, and that's why with Atlanta, like, I, you're like, man, I hope they make some trades at the deadline. Like, Atlanta has enough talent. Like, they can get hot in September. And honestly, like, 
kind of recent history has shown like if you can get in the wild card spot like and you can catch fire like you can ride that momentum look at arizona last year yeah they yeah arizona. That momentum all the way to the world series like, perfect example of that you're right yep philadelphia two years ago same thing like yeah. No, Philly last year, they ran into the buzzsaw of Arizona, and no, I don't think many people expected that because it it felt no. like, oh, this is Philly's year. Like, it, it, it really did. Been, if, if Philly had a halfway decent bullpen, if you had anybody else besides Brad Lidge closing games for the Phillies last year, they win the World Series. But even two games into that series with Arizona, it felt like, oh, my God, Phillies are going to the World Series. Yep. And then – it dumped right on its head, and you were like, "Oh, this is uh, a very different series we've got now." Um, but speaking yeah. of the Phillies, because we got to talk about them, right? Uh, we made the prediction earlier, like that you know, three starters with ten wins before the All Star break, and here we are with Wheeler, Nola, and Suarez. Like it's, I mean, that is something that's very impressive uh, to yeah. have all three of them, and it it kind of makes me think. It was Nola, I think, that re-signed with them at the beginning of the year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes me think if he was in Atlanta, how different things might be. <laughs> but um, And yeah. that would have been a ridiculous rotation that Atlanta would have had. But they wouldn't have had Chris Sale. So, because um, they yeah, went Nola out and got Suarez Chris Sale and... after that. So Yeah, Wheeler, Nola, and Suarez are 30 and 11 combined this year. Yeah, right? that's, it's, it's awesome. And, they're, they account for half of the team's 60 wins. Yep, the like, first team to 60 wins, too. I just read that. So yeah. um, really awesome for them and stuff. I know they're they're really crushing. They ended up getting win 60 without Bryce Harper. Uh, but I, I think that's kind of the, the neat thing that they have going on right now is in, in their – you know, they the Braves took two out of three from them, but then they turn around and they're beating on the Dodgers, right? So it's like they're kind of like testing their metal of that. And without Bryce Harper in there – they're giving other guys experience. They're starting to be able to that, really build on that. Well, that's how Alec Baum became, became an all-star in this year. Yeah. Like, he got opportunities in that lineup mm-hmm. because it's so stacked at the top with Turner, Harper, Will Mujo, like, Schwarber, Cassiolanos. Like, yeah, I can't even believe all the names that are in there. That's like, you yeah. know, those are, are great players. So, it's... Man, it's... Uh, they're, they're really going to have a, a difficult team, and I... I definitely feel as much as the the season started with us talking about the Dodgers and how great of a team they're going to have, I feel like the the NL, it's going through Philly. It's going to have to. Um, I, I really hope, I really, I mean, I know you don't want this for your sake, but like if, I really wish Philly, I hope Philly addresses their bullpen issues mm-hmm. at the trade deadline. No offense to Jose Alvarado, but like, I mean, like, the dude has like 20 saves, but like, yeah, uh, he has an ERA of almost four. Like that's not great for a closer. See, it's kind of a unique thing too, because as I look at it, like I'm not mad if the Braves don't win this year, because like you lost your best pitcher, you lost your best all around player uh, as well. So, I don't mind seeing other teams have success. Philly does like, I really want to see them win at some point. I, I would be mad if I were you, though, because Atlanta's, Atlanta has a window. They, they do, but listen, you can only do so much, right? It's next man up, yeah. and if you can compete, that's awesome. Like, I remember the last World Series they won without Acuna, but at the same time, like, you know, I want to, I just want to see good baseball at the same, you know, on, on the same hand. Yeah. So I don't mind seeing Philly have success. I don't mind seeing the the Dodgers have success or some of the teams in the American League. It, it actually allows me to kind of – take the stress button off a little bit and, and watch some of these other teams and see how they play. Uh, really a kind of a nice thing, but I, I, I just wanted to dive in real quick. Cause we, we've got the all-star game next week, home run derby. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I wanted to ask, like, is there anyone you're excited to see? Um, I know they've kind of finalized the, the rosters and stuff for home run derby now. Um, but is there anyone that you're really looking forward to? Like, man, I'm really happy this guy made an all-star team, or I really can't wait to watch this guy at home run derby. Uh, this is Gunnar Henderson's first home run derby. He has 27. I, I'm i really excited for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, the guy I'm big excited for in the home run derby, Adolis Garcia. <laughs> that man hit home runs last year in the postseason that I – like he perma- he gave PTSD permanently to some pitchers in the 
the, especially Houston. <laughs> what he did to Houston last year in the, in the ALCS. Yeah. Just, yeah. So I'm excited for that as well. Also, like, he's playing at home. I think the crowd's going to love that. So. Yeah, it should be a really good time they did, this year. They mm-hmm. did, quickly with the Derby, they did tr- change some of the rules. So going forward in the semifinals, mm-hmm. it used, they used to just be bracket style. But going forward in the semifinals, it gets reseeded based on how many home runs you hit in the first round. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Also, Pete Alonso trying to go for his third title, which would match Ken Griffey. That Ken that Griffey would be did. something crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so, but maybe. Maybe he'd, he'd have an opportunity yeah. for it. So um, the other thing that the All-Star break kind of signifies as well is, uh, you know, obviously a break in the season, but a little past halfway. Um, and I'm just kind of curious, like, teams, you expect to make some moves right before the deadline here. I, for me, I think the obvious one is I think the Yankees need some help of some kind. But I don't, the thing with the Yankees is I don't really see the roadmap because they kind of gave up a lot for one, for one year of Juan Soto. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, everybody assumes that he's going to resign with the Yankees, but, like, that's not a guarantee. Um so, like, the Yankees, I think, really need some help. Like I said earlier, I'd really like to see Philly shore up that bullpen. They have two really good setup guys, seventh and eighth inning guys. But, like, when it comes to your closer, I just – he doesn't instill confidence in me. Yeah. So, uh, those are really the big two. I mean, the Dodgers are kind of fighting – like, the Dodgers have been, like, injury-prone all year, which is weird. They just put Glasnow on the uh, the IL for 15 days. Mm-hmm. Um you know, they're dealing with Mookie Betts being hurt. He's probably not going to come back till like, September. Like, it's really tough. I think, like, it's just something to watch for. Like, I am I assume that the Dodgers will do something. I don't know what that is, but they'll do something because they're the Dodgers. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, And then is there anyone that you've heard rumors about being traded that you're hoping they don't get traded and you just hope they stay put? I've heard like some, like I read some like rumblings of if Texas can't like get this together of them, like kind of like blowing it up. But like, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's a good idea because that team is a pretty good team. They just, it's, it's hard to defend a title. That's, that's the thing with Texas yeah. that like people, like it's hard to defend the because everybody's coming for you. Mm-hmm. And like you have to do that again, and that's really difficult. Um, so yeah, I there's rumors that like there's like the Cubs are going to try to blow it up. They, they they were like weirdly contending for the first half of the season, but like they've quickly kind of fallen back down to earth. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Bryant plays for Colorado, and like I feel like every year he's in he's in trade talks. Like somebody's going to trade for him. Um, he's got a really big contract and doesn't have the best injury luck so like somebody taking that on taking on a big contract but i i honestly think i think a lot of teams are going to just stand pat this year okay I, I think that like a lot of teams feel good about where they are um and i think they're like like baltimore for example i don't think they're going to touch a thing now they have craig kimbrell closing games for them which you know my you know my stance on craig kimbrell you love him but like yeah i yeah yeah, it's uh, it's great, but um, but Baltimore has enough talent and depth, like, and they lost in the playoffs last year. So I think that like, I, I think those scars are going to be good for them, and I think they're yeah. I don't see anybody really making moves. I really don't. Like, okay. I think it's going to be a quiet deadline. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, with that we can go and transition. Unless there's anything else you wanted to cover in baseball, um, before we move on to. Dun, 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 the NFL, you've been very quiet. Um, yeah. So uh, things are really heating up now with the NFL. Uh, as, as you can see, you know, we're 56 days away from NFL kickoff, which is awesome. Yeah. I cannot wait for that. Um, but you guys will remember from some previous episodes that we had, uh, we started to cover some of the teams, uh, you know, uh, going through after the season, how they kind of did. And then we put that off for a little bit. Uh, just because we had other stuff we wanted to talk about with baseball, everything like that. But I want to make sure we get these done before uh, we have training camp start because I know it's it's heating up here soon. And I we've only got a few 
teams left that we got to go through uh, to basically cover how they did last year. So uh, let's go ahead. We'll kick it off with the NFC East. We had uh, the Commanders who finished four and thirteen, which was fourth in the division. Um, I just the the question I had for you, Al, like, did you did we expect this team to be good last year? Like, no. I, I I'm gonna say a thing. I the Commanders have been bad pretty much all of my life. Mm -hmm. So whenever they are good for a year, it's always a surprise to me. Yeah. It's a genuine surprise. Um, it was, I think it was our buddy John, when we all got together last weekend, he said he really, he really had high hopes for Washington this year. And yeah. He's a Cowboys fan. So uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Right? So, but he seemed like he was really high on Washington. Mm -hmm. Thought they were going to do some things this year. Well, yeah, you got to change the culture, right? And like you, you had said it like since we were young. It feels like this has been an or organization that's been in turmoil for twenty years. Like it, it, I can't yeah. remember the last time I was like, ah, oh, that's a good Washington football team, right? Um, but they get the new head coach, right, with Dan Quinn. He gets shot number two at it. See how he's going to do. Uh, they give up on Sam Howell. They trade him away to I think the Rams. Um, so he's gone. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Seattle. Seattle. He went to Seattle. Yeah. Uh, they bring in Austin Eckler. They still have Dotson and McLaurin there. Uh, they drafted the McCaffrey brother as well. Um, but they, they also added Bobby Wagner on defense, which is the guy that he spent, he spent a lot of time with Dan Quinn when they were in Seattle together. Yeah. And Dan Quinn needs a quarterback for his defense. And that's, that's who Bobby Wagner is. So I, I feel hey, like, Bobby yeah. I was going to say, with Bobby Wagner, like, he's a guy that's going to change – like, he's a guy you bring in to change the culture. Yeah. Yep. Like, in the locker room. Yep. And he, he's going to get guys to rally around that because th this is a guy that knows what it takes to win. Um, and so yep. I, I really think that's super valuable having him there. Um, but, you know, they draft Jaden Daniels, which I know you're not super high on and stuff, but I'm just curious. Like, do you expect them to be kind of good this year or, you know, your thoughts in this division? I think this division's kind of wide open this year. I mean, I think Philly has this division on lockdown mm -hmm. personally. Um, but after that, like, I, I think there's, there could be another team that comes out of here and that's a re it could be, well, it's not going to be the giants. Let's be honest. That's, I, I don't think that's happening. Yeah. Um, and I, I like Jaden Daniels. I do. I loved him at LSU. I think he was electric. And I, and I, and I have said this to you, a million times, I worry he was able to outrun everybody in college. Can't do that in the pros. There are guys, <laughs> there are guys that are fast as fast as he is in the pros. Yeah, and you can't outrun everybody in the pros. Like Lamar Jackson's the only guy in the league currently that can outrun everyone in the pros. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, Jaden Daniels, just his body worries me that it's not going to be able to hold up. Yeah, it's not like he's built like Anthony Richardson, and even Anthony Richardson, being as big as he is, still got hurt, right? Like it's yeah, it just it it puts a lot on you. There there's some big three hundred fifty pound dudes running after you, you know. It's 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 going to be tough, but I'm very I'm excited to see them. I'm you know curious as to how, like how this this team is going to function, and I think they have some playmakers there, man. I, I I think they brought in Zach Ertz at tight end as well, so Jaden Daniels is going to have guys that he can get the ball to. Uh, it's just a matter of you know them doing it. But um, and the thing is, you can't sit Daniels too because like, no, no, they don't have anybody. Behind. The guy they have right now on the death chart is Mariota. Like as for yeah. the number two, like you can't. We we all know how that story ends. Like. Yeah, Not unfortunately great. for Mariota, right? Like, that's just yeah. sad. But it is better. Like, so they finished fourth in the division, but I feel like the next team, we, uh, we're we certain this team is not going to be good this year uh, with, with the no. Giants, right? They finished at 6-11, and 11, which was good enough for third. But I just, and I, fe I felt this for like a few years, they've been going through a bit of an identity crisis. The Hard Knocks release did not look good for them, in my oh, mind. Okay. Like I texted you immediately after watching that first episode. I yeah. Like, what the fuck? When, it, when I'm listening to that, I feel like they're talking about trading common magic cards, right? Yeah. Like not, not <laughs> rares or mythics, yeah. right? We're talking yeah. about commons, right? Like in Saquon Barkley, no offense, like anyone that knows this, he's not a common <laughs> magic card, yeah. right? Like this dude is the, one of the elite running backs in the NFL, 
Um, or at least he should be treated that way. He's the face of your franchise, right? Um, yeah. But I just, I don't know. As I was thinking about a way to describe this team, I feel like it's 50 first dates. Every week they look like a different team. You don't know what you're going to get out of them. Daniel Jones, like, I know everyone wants to put the, the place to blame on him, but, like, he had the neck injury. Like, <laughs> they bring in Malik Neighbors this year, who I think is going to be awesome for them. But that's, I'm not sure that's enough, right? Like, Darren yeah. Waller out of there, I feel like is probably going to be a good thing. Um, but I don't know. The, the the whole Daniel Jones thing just makes me laugh because as we're sitting here talking about who the $60 million quarterback is going to be, and it's probably going to be Brock Purdy or Dak. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see, but like people want to blame Daniel Jones for getting paid 40 million. It's like, but blame his agent, blame the organization. Don't blame Daniel Jones. Yeah. He's not sitting in there negotiating. It's his agent doing it. Right. And you wanted to pay him. I know this is like fucked, but like their backup right now is Drew Locke. I would rather see Drew Locke at this point. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I actually like D Daniel Jones in that system. But he needs playmakers, dude. And, like, one yeah. guy is not enough. Like, Wandale Robinson, good player and stuff. But I, I don't I don't know. I think they need more. You can't just go drop back and throw the ball 20 times to Malik Neighbors. I mean, maybe you can. But I, I don't know. I, I mean, Malik Neighbors in college was sick. Yeah, he, like, he's really there's, good. But There's a reason Jaden Daniels won the Heisman. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, e even as good as some of these guys are, you can't target J.J. 20 times a game. Right or Jamar no. Chase, like you can't do that. But the the one move I did like that they uh, that they made uh, out of all the moves was bringing in Brian Burns, right? And they basically got him for peanuts compared to what the Rams offered Carolina. I, I swear, like as it, you hear more about the NFL draft and what some of these teams are willing to give up, it's like, man, you guys are really looking to like sell off draft picks and your own children just to be able to get some of these guys in some of the worst like they need to have a 30 for 30 segment on the worst draft day deals ever because some of the stuff yeah. that people are offering up to move up one spot it's it doesn't seem worth it right like it just doesn't it's like you leverage yeah. your whole team's future on just uh, on that but i don't expect this team to be good this year i i don't think you do either right uh -huh. no no, and, like, Hard Knocks, like, first of all, I love that there's a Hard Knocks preseason now where, mm -hmm. like, they just go through, like, the draft and stuff. Yeah. I think that's brilliant, and I have been watching yeah. every episode, and I love it. Super um, engaging. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it gives me something to, like, think about. Uh, it, it gets me closer to football season. Like, it passes yeah. the time. and uh, But, yeah, this, this team is just not – they're not good. They're like, not going to be the better team of New York, at least for, for this year. Um, yeah, and that's saying something. Yeah, it is. So um, next we've got the Eagles, right? Had a bit of a a great start to the year, but just a very disappointing like last two thirds of it, right? It seemed like as soon as stuff started to come out that AJ Brown was kind of upset, uh, they just couldn't play well and couldn't fix problems. They couldn't plug enough holes in the bag at that point. Uh, they finished at eleven and six, which most teams would be very happy about. Uh, second in the division, but they lose to Tampa Bay in the wild card round, which we kind of, we had talked about this last year, kind of had that feeling like this is how it was going to end. Like, yeah. you know, and it just, I, I don't know. Everyone expected the step back from the Super Bowl loss, which was like kind of devastating for them. Um, I know you've mentioned before you think Sirianni's the problem. I don't, but like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like they needed coordinators. They didn't have them last year. Now they yeah. bring in Kellen Moore on the offense, which is definitely going to help. They've got, I believe, Vic Fangio on the defense, which, yeah. it, like, Vic Fangio is a, a defensive guru, right? Like, this guy, yeah, he wasn't a great head coach in Denver, but, like, has been known for his defensive prowess uh, th throughout the league for years. But I think the biggest thing that I like that this team did, other than drafting the two two cornerbacks in the first two rounds of the draft, um were was was bringing in Barkley because that's just yeah. not only did you bring him in you stole him from a division mate and that's something that's ridiculous and they turned around and did almost the same thing before that when they bring in CJ Gardner Johnson from Detroit um because he was in Philly before when they uh he was he was in Philly before when they made it to the Super Bowl right i think yeah. they won that Super Bowl 
And then, um, you know, they add some linebackers as well. But I just, I don't know. I feel like it it's still all going to fall on Jalen Hurts' shoulders. These are the two teams in all of the NFL. And it's funny because we always talk about, like, how it's a quarterback-driven league, how quarterbacks have the responsibility, all of this stuff. But I feel like... N- very few quarterbacks get as much pressure as Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott. Every week when you turn on the telly, you see them, uh, the, the commentators yeah. talking about, these are the two guys, like, it's them. If their team fails, it's on them. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, it just, I, I don't know. Well, it's part of, it's part of being a quarterback <laughs> in the NFL. Like, it is, all yeah. The glory, but, like, what comes with that is, like, you also get all the shit, like, if you lose. Yeah. And like that sucks, but like that's that's the position. Yeah. And the thing that worries me with Philly, two things. Hurts sometimes gets nicked here and there. Mm-hmm. And like that's fine. But like when your backup's now Kenny Pickett, it's a little worrisome. Yeah, he's also, he's a very tough guy though. Like I'm pretty sure he was playing through like a bad bruised yeah. knee last year. Benny bad bruised knees. <laughs> and so yeah, had to, had oh, to be man. done. Yeah, so uh, Ben will be happy. I gave him a little shout out, but um, it, I, I feel like he was playing through that for much of the year. But people talk about how tough he is, like playing through injury. But go ahead, continue on that. I I interrupted you there. No, no, no. I just like he always has these like nicks here and there. Yeah, and like at some point that bill's gonna come due where he gets really hurt. Mm-hmm. I hope that doesn't happen, but like. It's just something to think about. And also, I I don't think this is getting talked about enough. I and just something to look for. I think that with Jason Kelsey retiring, I know they have Cam Jurgens. I understand like Cam Jurgens, like they drafted him a couple of years ago. Like he's just been sitting under Kelsey, like learning, and like that's great. But like Kelsey was the coach of that offensive line. Yep. And I and I know the rest of that line is insanely good, but like the center is he's honestly the leader of that line yeah. because he's the one who sees everything, calls out protections. And I just, I just worry about that a little bit. I think there's going to be a slight drop off. And I think you might notice that on, on some, on some, sometimes. Well, like, what you're going to notice is as soon as they do the tush push and don't get it, they're going to be like, Oh, they've lost it. Here we go. And there's going to be the huge overreactions to it every week on it. Oh, yeah. this time. But if you look at the body of work over the season and they're still successful six, seven out of 10 times, they're still going to do it. Right. Yeah. It may not be up at nine out of 10, but it may be if it's seven or eight, would you be upset? Like, I'd still yeah. be happy. I'd still be running it. You know, you got to figure out a way to stop it. Um, also, and Cam Jurgens isn't a small guy. He's no. six, three, 300 pounds. Like, well, Plus, you for a also center, he's a big boy, but like, you also add a big boy behind him in in Barkley, yeah. where you don't need to tush push it. You you might be able to fake that and, and run it in with Barkley, but I can't wait to see the overreactions that pe- people are going to have to that. Like, oh, they can't do it anymore because they fake it with Jalen and then hand it off to Barkley outside, right? Like, it's oh man. My my favorite overreaction that's going to happen week one is Saquon Barkley runs for like. 35 yards in the first game mm-hmm. and then people are just gonna be like see this is why you don't give running backs money and it's like yeah like, <laughs> i cannot wait for that yeah that I is definitely gonna happen yeah well speaking of a team that did not give a running back money uh the dallas cowboys right they finished at 12 and 5 uh and uh, oh, i'm sorry man. sorry we got to do this john uh, but they finished first in the division. They lose in the divisional round to, to Green Bay. And it's just a super disappointing end to the season when you think about it. Like, super disappointed in keep them keeping McCarthy, too. But they decide that's what we're going to do. They just got beat up at home by Green Bay. That That's it. And, like, we've been talking about Dak and his boot and all that crap. It doesn't matter. Right. What matters is if this team does not win the Super Bowl this year, or at least go to a Super Bowl, both Dak and probably McCarthy are going to be gone after the season. That's if Dak's yeah. even there at the beginning because he's waiting on a contract. CeeDee Lamb's waiting on a contract. Micah Parsons is waiting on a contract. Like, I think they're all going to get paid, but I think it's just, you know, they were super quiet in free agency. They didn't do much. Then they bring in Zeke Elliott. I just. How does this defense respond without oh. Dan Quinn? There's too many questions around this team. Um, 
but just as we were talking to John the other day, like, and I, I had mentioned, I feel like this team has gotten steadily worse every year since they traded away Amari Cooper. Yeah, and, and they didn't have to trade him. That's the that's the thing that we talked about this with John. And John, we all came to the conclusion that like there was no reason you didn't have to trade him. You could have kept him in CD Lamb. They could like, have, yeah. Yep. I just yeah. I, I don't know. Like it's the same narrative every year with Jerry, right? Like he just wants control over it. It's uh, I don't know. They I, I, I want to see I don't think Bill Belichick will never go I don't think he'll ever go to Dallas. Yeah, and and that's Strangely enough, why so many people are thinking he will go there is that Jerry will take a step back and that, like, I, I don't see that happening, but... I don't either. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned yeah. Bill. As we move into the AFC East right now, you're... Bill we trust. Yeah. Bill we trust. So, uh, except last year, right? Uh, so the New England oh, Patriots okay. last year, they finished 4-13, and uh, which was fourth in the division, but just a, a yeah. disappointing season for them. Mac Jones obviously gets traded away. Uh, it, it didn't... I personally feel that Mac Jones didn't get the coaching that he needed, the consistent coaching. Now, I'm not saying that Belichick didn't coach him. What I'm saying is uh, is that I don't think he had the steady, consistent offensive coordinator from the beginning to the end, right? Like, no. and, and that is something that, like, you can't, no offense, but Matt Patricia is a defensive coordinator. You can't have really? him... Yeah. They brought in Bill O'Brien last year, and like that—that that just helped because the the damage had been done. Like, well, and so like, how much of the team's responsibility is this, right? Because there was rumors that Mac Jones had lost the locker room. That's going to happen anyways when you're turning the ball over, right? But like, to not to feel like you're not getting the coaching you need, and then also to lose the locker, it it just is it's rough. It was a disaster for them. So um, I just feel like New England never put him in, in the position to succeed. And I, I don't know if a lot of Pats fans feel that way, but, like, he was highly touted coming out of out of college in Alabama. Like, San Francisco was talking about taking him, right? Like, yeah. and then to turn around and see, like, where he's at now as a backup in Jacksonville, it just doesn't feel great. But me, like, and I heard this on the radio the other day, they were comparing rosters going into this season, and they were saying, like, okay, so which part of this roster scares you? They weren't talking about New England, it was a different team, but, like, as I look at this team, Ramondra Stevenson is is the guy that I, I see as, like, the playmaker on offense, yeah. right? Maybe Polk, there, there's rumors about him being, like, a good young receiver that's going to come out and really do a lot of things for them, but then it's the defense, right? And with Judon back, I feel like the defense is going to be the one that has to carry this team. Um, I know yeah. I know, we've talked about it many times, right? Like, people want to see Drake May early and stuff, but I just don't think – I don't think any quarterback has a chance to really succeed with the foundation that exists there right now. They need more. Well, that's the reason they brought in Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. Because I don't think – if you're going to see Drake May play – I think it's going to be, remember Mahomes' rookie year where he played the last game of the season yep. and, like, lit it up, and they're like, okay, we've seen enough. We know what we got to do. Like, I think yep. that's what's going to happen with Drake May this year. Like, uh -huh. I don't think he's going to play a single down until, yep. until then. And All why right. would I, – I, I don't want him to. I want him to sit for a year. I want him to learn. Like, I – yeah. So. Sorry, Ed. I had my dad talking to me. Give me give me one second, man. Yeah. All right, and we're back here talking about the Jets, uh, who finished third in the division last year with a record of seven and ten. Um, and I I felt I don't know about you, Al, but I felt like they kind of rode this narrative all season of like, are we going to bring him back? Are we not bringing him back? Like obviously it was it. yeah it was very. Um, very scary to see it happen three plays into the season, right? With with Rogers tearing his Achilles, it just—I don't know. Like, it, I didn't like them hanging that thought, that hopeful thought, over their fans' heads all season, um, because I don't think Rogers was ever going to be in a position where he was going to actually be able to come back, right? Like the, yeah. last season. Think about how bad that would have been had he come back if they made the playoffs, barely, right? And he comes back and then gets hurt again. And then, like, the position it puts them in, right? But, like, you kind of yeah. know the risks. Like, 
I don't know. For for me, also, the, the Wilson experiment has failed miserably. Uh, I think another guy that really just went to a bad situation, didn't get the right coaching. Um, I just, and now he's in Denver. I can't believe Sean Payton traded for him, but um, that's a thing. Uh, Denver's quarterback room is hilarious this year. Yeah, um, it is. I love it so much. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. God we're, damn it. We're going to have some fun when we talk about it because they are oh, yeah, they oh. are in rough shape. Um, but th- listen, the Jets' offense was disappointing. Defense is really what, what really killed it for them last year and, and like gave them opportunities in games. Um, you look at some of the things they addressed on offense, right? They bring in uh, Moses from a big tackle from Baltimore, right? Like it's a huge trade for them. Um, but I, and I could tell these are older notes that I had put together on the Jets because they did add Mike Williams. <laughs> I said, I want to oh, see them add God. a big name wide receiver. Just hope it's not Mike Williams. But Mike Williams, I've changed changed my perspective on this a little bit because if it's if Mike Williams is able to stay healthy there, I think not only is he going to be an MVP for that team, um, but he could also be a great pick in fantasy as well uh, this year. Um, but I just, I don't know. The The, the real question I got to ask you, because I want to know your thought on this, is Rodgers had, it was rumored that he wanted to play three to four more years. Is that something, like, I, I can tell by your eyes stretching, like, that doesn't seem seem good but like dude like really three to four more years i i can't i can't live in a world where he is playing football for three to four more years yeah it could be rough i can't especially in a team for a team like new york Mm -hmm. where like he just gets even a bigger microphone like god no just god damn it no god damn it no it could be bad yeah um Seeing him on McAfee sometimes is too funny because he's unlike any other interviewee that they bring on. And it's always, it feels like it's always like a political undertone or something like that, that he's throwing out there. I'm going to say something as like, look, I know that I'm a weirdo. I know, and I know this and I, 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 it's nothing new. I, I know this, like, but when I acknowledge that he's a weirdo, like we're saying something. Yeah. Yep. Like, come on. He's very different. Um, he's yeah. someone that marches to the beat of his own drum, for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, moving on, some more interesting teams that we've got, right? So the the Dolphins, right? They finish at eleven and six. Finish second in the division. They lost to the Chiefs in the wild card round in that like a hundred degree below zero game. Um, but this looked like the best offense in the league at the beginning part of the season, but I really felt like, and I think injuries played a part in this, but that they struggled down the stretch and the consistency just wasn't there. Now I don't really put the the playoff game on Tua and stuff like they were playing in really bad conditions there. Um, I do. Like, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it just, like you're, if you're a number one guy, like you find a way to win. You did. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mr. Tom Brady. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just, I don't know. I'm just saying I understand when maybe someone might struggle in the snow um, a little bit, (laughs) right? So uh, I just, I look at the bright side, right? Like he's obviously looking to get paid now. Uh, There's been rumors of that and stuff, but like he was able to stay healthy all season in a year that not a lot of quarterbacks were able to stay healthy. So him and Lamar, who have been two of the most injury prone Guys, like, we're able to stay healthy all year, whereas a lot of other quarterbacks ended up going down. So, um, yeah. but just looking at this team top to bottom, like, they've got crazy playmakers all over. They add OBJ at the wide receiver position, but I just, I don't think he's really going to do much there. I feel like he's, I don't want to use the word washed, but he's older now. Um, but the defense, in my mind, is what really need needed help, right? And we had talked about this last year, right around week five, as Miami started to look very, very good. They were going up to play in Buffalo, and you said, look out, this is what's going to happen. And they started to play tough teams and weren't able to win those games. So and Buffalo hung up 48 on them. Actually. Yeah, so yeah, they, Buffalo they were looked... never the same again. Yeah, yeah, Buffalo looked very, very good against them that week. Um and it just, I don't know, I feel like they lost a lot. They didn't re-sign Christian Wilkins. He's in, in Vegas now. Um, I just, I don't know. They they lost a lot. 
in the off season, right? Um, yeah. It's going to remain to be seen. Or, did they cut or trade their corner Howard? The one uh, ha- Howard didn't get re-signed. Yeah. You know? Okay. So he's still available. Maybe he signs like a league minimum deal or something like that. Maybe more than that. I feel like he's worth which more is, than that. But which is wild that nobody has signed him yet. Yeah, dude. Same thing. Look at Justin Simmons. Right. Like how 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 did a guy that made the Pro Bowl two years ago not like and was the leader of the Denver defense last year not getting re-signed by yeah. anybody? No one's throwing him like small money, something like that. There must be something wrong. So I, I don't know, but Miami, I I think they'll be better this year, and I think this division's going to be wide open. I think the Jets are going to be better. Obviously, I think New England's probably not going to be great this year, but I think it's going to be between the Jets and Miami uh, to determine who's going to win this year. I just think Buffalo's lost a bit too much. So, um, but we'll, let, yeah. let's jump into them, right? Like they finished eleven and six last year. They won the division, right? Remember, they came from behind uh, to be able to win that, which was quite impressive. But um, they they still lose to the Chiefs in the divisional round, right? It's like that arch nemesis and. Uh, re- really kind of a tough thing to go through. But um, I personally thought last year was their best chance, right? Burrow goes down, Chiefs not playing great. They still couldn't manage to put it together, and it's just like, oh, yeah. man. And then now all, all of those talks with Diggs and stuff, Diggs leaves in the off season to, you know, gets traded to Houston. So now it's like, I don't know, man. I'm glad D- Gabe Davis is gone. Um, I, 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 he doesn't need hey, to be there. That- yeah. That 13 second game, uh, he had four touchdowns that game. It was insane. Yeah. That's, I, that's what I'll forever remember him as the guy that Kansas City could not cover. Yeah. Um, really, the only guy they had to cover deep at that point, right? Um, yeah. But I just don't know. Like, it, it seems like it's going to be Josh Allen and some guys this year. I think they're going to get back to running the football more. Kincaid, I think, is going to get a lot. He grew a little bit last year in terms of being starting to become that guy um and now josh allen's gonna need him to be that guy this year but i just i don't know i look at it the afc the landscape is getting it's getting harder as like some teams really reloaded this year and i don't yeah, feel it's, like it's a minefield yeah a i don't minefield feel like thing. buffalo did man like i look at that like i think they may be set up for a down year um josh allen i think and I know I've said this about Brady before, but like when Brady played for New England, he was good for 12 wins a year. Yeah. You could just pencil that in. Yeah. Whereas Tom Brady and some dudes. Um, and I think like Josh Allen is good for 10 wins a year. Just yeah. Pencil him in with some dudes. Like, and I think that'll that'll get him to the playoffs, probably. Like, He's very difficult to defend. And I think that's yeah. a that's a difficult thing for a lot of teams uh to be able to to deal with him. So um yeah, so it's it's going to be interesting in in the AFC East because, like I said, the Patriots, you know, they're down, right? Um, now it's kind of deciding, you know, who's who's going to take over. Are the Bills going to surprise everyone and they win the division? We'll we'll have to kind of see. But, um, well, talking about probably your favorite division in all of football, the NFC South, uh, the Carolina Panthers, definitely great team, right? They finished two and fifteen last year, which was fourth in their division, but. Uh, they get the first pick in the draft, uh, but it went to the Bears, right? Because they traded it last year for Bryce Young. Now, let me just ask the wrong quarterback at yeah, number one. Yeah, That's... let me let me just ask you something. If they had kept that pick, right, and not traded it to the Bears, right, and say they didn't grab Bryce Young last year, but maybe they just grabbed someone else, they let Sam Darnold run the offense or whatever, and then held out this year for Caleb Williams. Would you feel better about this team with Caleb Williams there than with Bryce Young? No, I mean, yeah, because they wouldn't have had to cheer, trade DJ Moore, um, and maybe they don't trade Burns, but like I, I don't know, like I don't know at this point, like Carolina, like we don't have to spend a lot of time on them. Yeah, pencil them in for two wins. Well, oh, isn't it funny like, because if they didn't trade DJ Moore and they drafted Caleb Williams, he'd be playing with DJ Moore. Yeah. So Still it's playing with them, just yeah, a different team. Yeah, yeah it's kind of interesting. And maybe Bryce Young is in Chicago, and they continue to be terrible. Who knows? So, anyhow, I I, I feel the same way. I know they signed a few guys, a few good guards with uh, Robert Hunt, Damian Lewis, um, but I just think like Bryce Young needs a lot of protection. I think this team is two to three years away minimum. 
Um, that's that's be generous. Wow. Yeah. Well, a team that is in win now mode, according to them, the Atlanta Falcons. They finished at seven and ten last year, third in the division. Uh, Raheem Morris, he gets a shot, right? Uh, spent a few years under Sean McVay there in in Los Angeles, but comes out. Um, I know you were happy when they fired Arthur Smith. I know you're God, very happy because um, everybody's had Kyle Pitts in fantasy. Everybody's yeah. had Kyle Pitts in fantasy, and it's the same story. You just get heartbroken because he's being held hostage by a man who doesn't know how to throw it in the end zone. Or B. John Robinson. Even you give him the one running back that you're like, give this guy 350 carries. And he's like, we'll give him 150. Yeah. We'll give him 150. We, we'll see what happens yeah, we'll, with that. We'll give so. him five a game and call it call it a day. Yeah, and we're not giving it to him on the goal line either. So yeah. um, I just think, like, they had too much talent on the offensive side. I'm not a big um, – Drake London fan, but uh, they add Kirk Cousins. Yeah, they add Kirk Cousins, and maybe Kirk can turn him into a a good receiver, and and hopefully he's able to use uh, Kyle Pitts and Bijan. I think they have enough on offense to be able to compete, and I think they'll beat some teams this year um, that they weren't in position to beat last year. Don't forget, this team, as they played last year, was in a lot of close games. So, like, I, I think Kirk, you get him in there, and if he's healthy, then could be big but i just um, i don't trust them to stop a child crossing the road like <laughs> like I, I don't want defense like that's yeah. the thing like offensively cool they have all the weapons but like can, can they can they rush the quarterback is that possible like what do we maybe like can, I, I don't know man like i just i don't know i, I just <laughs> I don't trust them defensively. Uh, just to just to let you know, they could have gone pass rusher instead of backup quarterback in the draft, but um, uh, they could have done it. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yep. Uh, next is the Saints, and th- this is a particularly special team. Uh, they finished at nine and eight, which was second in the division. But your absolute favorite player in the league, Captain Checkdown, Derek Carr, baby. So. Uh, Get in the car, right? So, oh. <laughs> uh, but they they add Chase Young to the defense, uh, which is you know should give them an upgrade because then they can't just tee off on Cam Jordan, right? Like they've got to respect the other side of the defense as well. Um, they cut Michael Thomas, like that kind of needed to happen, right? Because uh, Olave is the dude now, um, and he's definitely a good receiver. I mean, Kam- Kamara had a great season last year. He was one of the really bright spots on this team. Uh, but they really needed help on the offensive line. They addressed some of that in the draft. Um, any big things you expect for this team this year at all? No. Okay. Um, I, I think it's more the. I honestly think it's more of the same. I think they're going to finish nine and eight again. Um, it, the thing that bothers me, I just, I, I just want to spend a minute talking about David Carr uh, because, or sorry, Derek Carr. Shitty quarterback either way, but like, <laughs> at least with Derek Carr, like. <laughs> If you just look at his stat, I want to tell you his stats last year. He threw for 38, almost 3,900 yards, 68% of his passes completed, 25 touchdowns, eight picks. And like you look at that, and you're like, how did this team finish nine and eight? Yeah. It's because they were down 20 every game, and Carr just threw a bunch of garbage time touchdowns. Like, I think you're just going to get more of that this year. Like, yeah. Most like, teams would be happy with a quarterback throwing 25 touchdowns and eight picks and almost 4,000 yeah. yards, right? Like, but it's... And, like, Dennis Allen is their coach. He's not a great coach. He's fine. Like, yeah. Yeah, they're going to finish 9-8 and eight again. Yeah, I, cool. I, I like, think they may finish below 500 this year. But um, that's just because I think Atlanta's on the rise. I think Tampa Bay's on the rise, too. Um, but Tampa Bay, right? Like the winners of the division, they, they finished at nine and eight. They won the division. Um, and Baker and the Bucks get it done, right? Like they beat Philly at home in the playoffs. Uh, I'm sorry at home, but in Tampa Bay, uh, Philly comes to town and they beat them, beat them up. And I think Philly had the more talented roster, but Tampa Bay just went after them. Baker gets re-signed. They ink Evans as well. Um, they're going to try to run it back. And I, I really like their chances too. Uh, they add uh, the guy out of Duke, the center, Graham. Can't think of his last name, but he's a very good player and oh, stuff. Oh, Graham Barton. Yeah, Barton. 
He's going to be able to come in. He's going to kill it for them. So, um, And I think he's going to slot in perfectly there. They've got a young offensive line. Rashad White running the ball. I think that they, they're they going to be a tough team, a tough out that Atlanta's going to have to get over. And I know New Orleans has this thought, these thoughts in their head that, oh, we could make the playoffs too. Tampa Bay is going to be tough for them to beat. So, well, I just assume that that's this is Tampa Bay's division to lose. Yeah. Uh, um, also, yeah. Also, from a fantasy standpoint, if you want just the easiest thousand yards receiving you'll ever get, just draft Mike Evans. No, this he year he's, he's not getting it. So, how dare you? Yeah, no, I don't want to bet against. Dare. I don't. I want... hope he gets eighteen hundred yards and we play this clip back. Yeah, oh, I, I know that's going to be devastating. W- one thing I did want to mention about the Bucks. So Tom Moore, who he's been around the league a lot as an um, offensive line coach, but w- working with offenses and stuff, he was in Indy for a bit. They just mentioned on the radio yesterday he's 86 years old and he's still working for Tampa Bay. It's, That's it's, wild. Yeah, he's one of the most brilliant minds in, in football. Um, incredible that he's still coaching. So shout out to Tom Moore. Um, all right, let's move on to the AFC South and then we'll get this wrapped up for today. Uh, Tennessee, they finish at six and 11, fourth in the division. Um, sad to see Vrabel go, but Callahan's going to get his, you know, gig, right? Like, and he was, he was previously the offensive coordinator with Cincinnati comes in here and, uh, Rand Carthon, who used to be a running back for the Colts for a little bit. Uh, he mm-hmm. made a wave of signings in the off season and things ended up going really well. You know, he brings in Tony Pollard, a then he trades for Snead at corner. They bring in Calvin Ridley. Um, and I just feel like the moves that they're making insinuate that this team wants to compete. It's too bad that they play in the division that they are because I, they're going to finish third this year. Like, mm-hmm. I, like, the things they did are great. And I think they have a good up and coming defense. And I just, everybody seems to think that Kelvin Ridley's a guy and he's, he's not. Cause he like, was. And he was for four minutes. Like, and then, yeah. got, and then he got pinched on the gambling thing and like, he just hasn't been the same since. Yeah, I don't know. I, I want to see him turn it around and stuff. Uh, you know, maybe maybe he gets an opportunity to here. I just, I don't know. Will Levis, we're putting a lot of faith in him to to be that guy. Um, and this division, I think, could be similar to the how the AFC North is now. Because now you've got four teams, regardless if I like the Jaguars or not, four teams in this division that are going to be tough. They're going to yeah. cannibalize each other, too. Yeah. Um, because you know Tennessee's going to play Houston tough. You know Jacksonville's going to play them tough. Indy's going to play Houston tough. They're all going to play each other tough. So it's going to be, you know, everyone's coming. They want the crown. Um, yeah. Indy, listen, they were pretty uh, impressive last year considering, like, AR only played a couple weeks, right? Uh, but they re-signed Pittman. I didn't really like it, but he's an Indy, Indy guy and he produced, right? Like, so it's – you got to kind of – number one wideouts aren't aren't just on the market, right? Like you got to really be able to sign them. So uh, they give them a little bit of help with A.D. Mitchell. They signed him. Josh Downs is back next year too. Um, They've got a happy and healthy JT. So um, with no competition because they, you know, Zach Moss ended up leaving in the off season. Um, But I just curious, like what you think of this team and like the windmill dunks that Anthony Richardson is doing in the off season and like, that must know. scare you every time you see that. That has to terrify you. I wonder like, if they like rewrite the contracts when they see videos like that, and they're like, "Cannot play basketball." Like, <laughs> you know, like I wonder if they start doing stuff like that. I think the two things that I really, I well, I think the thing I really liked about the Colts, and I know this is funny, but like them signing Joe Flacco, yeah, to a pretty big deal for a for a backup conjure for a backup quarterback. I think he's just going to learn a lot from Joe Flacco. And I, yep. but he, I, a lot of it depends on like if Richardson can change his play style. Is there and anyone that like doesn't he, like Joe Flacco either? Like, I, well, I think I, we were all pretty done with him before last year. Yeah. But, but like, okay. But did you really dislike him? Like, is he a no. dislikable guy? Like, no, just, I see he, that's that signing really hurt Cleveland a lot and really helped Indy. Yeah. Like, and, and you're right. Like, when you have a guy like that that's, you know, Super Bowl winning quarterback, um, in, I, I want to mention too, not only did he win a Super Bowl, 
Um, but it wasn't like a Trent Dilfer S Super Bowl. He won a Super Bowl in the era of Roethlisberger, Brady, Manning, Rodgers. Like, that's a Drew Brees. Like, that's a big deal. A yeah. really big and he deal. He was the guy on that team. He's the reason they won that Super Bowl. Yeah. Yep. He went on a run. Yeah, he did. Postseason. He did. So I, I don't know. I, I I think it's it's awesome for him being there. I think they're going to be a a good team there. I, I think on defense they're. I think they'll play better than they did last year. And I thought last year they played pretty well, but I want to see them yeah. tighten some things up. I think the secondary needed some help. They did a little bit on that, but they didn't bring in anyone that I was like, for sure, like, okay, these now their secondary's fixed. Um, do, you, do you feel like with Richardson, this feels like his rookie year all over again? Yep. He didn't really get to play much last year. Yep. So I, my follow-up to that is this. Are you... Are you prepared to kind of take the lumps that potentially come with that with a rookie season? Hmm. Or did you see enough last year where you were like, no, I think he's got this kind of figured out. I'm ready for what he can he can be unleashed with. I don't think he's got it figured out. I think there's going to be some growing pains. But as I look at it, I think he has the talent to kind of make a few mistakes and make up for it. Okay. Um, Because I think... First of all, like he's the physical tools are insane. Like even people talk about him, like other guys yeah. that have come in the building, they're like, dude, this guy's a freak. Like he's not not like you or me. He's a he's a different dude. So I, I really think I don't know, what is he, six five, two hundred and fifty pounds? They say that that's what he weighs at the end of workouts. Like yeah, six, yeah, six four. Six four, two fifty. Yeah, like he's a big guy, right? And he runs wow. super fast very powerful i think if he can find a way to harness all of that like this is a guy that's looking over his lineman's head like he doesn't need to to jump up he's not a gardner Minshew or anything like that right or a baker this guy's looking above the lineman at the field yeah. so it's i don't know I'm, I'm excited for what he can do but i want to see him in a full season where he stays healthy and i think he i think he, again he's he got to change the way things. he plays yeah Yep. And I think th this is what I will say is Shane Steichen is very smart. He understands what happened last year. He played with, J uh, you know, he coached Jalen Hurts before. I think he's going to be able to coach AR up. And Joe Flacco is going to give him some of the knowledge of be how to be able to stay available. Yeah. Um, yeah. In this league. I don't want to see him making Carson Wentz type plays where it's like, you didn't need to die for that and then tear your ACL, right? Like no. you could have just gone down or slid and we can get it on the next down, right? I think the I think the Colts will contend for the division this year. I really do. Yeah. I really do. I think that they I think they're a year or two away. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I, they're gonna be hanging around this year. If Richardson stays healthy, they're gonna hang around. Yeah, he'll he'll so. keep them in games and especially I want to see him lean on I, I see them very similar to Baltimore, right? Like good defense. Good, really good running game, good running back with Jonathan Taylor. They've got Derrick Henry there now, but then yeah. also the mobile quarterback, right? So, like, I really hope that he can pull on some of that and lean on some of that and figure out a way to, to stay healthy all year. Um, yeah. All right, so the last two we've got, we've got Jacksonville, uh, yeah. who finished at 9-8. Oh, and eight. Yeah, I love that laugh. Uh, they second in the division, uh, but this was the most disappointing team in football in my mind. Uh, for last year. And that's saying something like the NFC East, like the the way that went in the postseason, it's scary that there's another team that was more disappointing. But, um, you know, I remember at the beginning, they played Kansas City tight and we were kind of like talking about that. I think that was like week two of last year. And we're yeah. like, oh man, like maybe this team could be good. You know, it seemed like they were loaded on offense and they just couldn't get it together. And I, I just didn't get that because at, at the end, like he's got some of the best metrics of any running back not only coming out of college but in the nfl like separation rate elusiveness all of that stuff like broken tackles all of that but this team just i don't know i feel like they can't be trusted but they do say that it's the third year that for a quarterback to be in doug marone's system that's when they start start going so um we'll see i i think the thing Everybody kind of gave him a pass last year because their offensive line wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. 
I don't really think their offensive line is that great to start with. And yeah. you got rid of the one thousand yard receiver you had in Ridley last year, mm-hmm. which like Christian Kirk's the guy. Like I don't Brian Thomas is the guy. Like, well, maybe Brian Thomas could be the guy, but I know Gabe Davis is not the guy. No, and like like Evan Ingram's the guy. Like respectfully, like we watched that show with the Giants. Like he's he's a decent tight end, but like not yeah, not not the number one guy type deal. It's not like having a Kelsey or a Kittle or an Andrews in there, Laporta, McBride, one of those guys, right? Um, Hawkinson when he's healthy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, um, he's like, I forgot that he almost had a thousand yards last year. That's how un like. He had yeah. 963 yards receiving. I I watched a few Jacksonville games and I didn't see that guy in those games. So yeah, they like, were loaded a lot and like he had a few bloated games and some yeah. that it was like feast or famine big time. But yeah. I just think I don't know. I, I really and based on what we've talked about, I feel like both of us have this team finishing last this year in the Absolutely. division. Yep. Yeah, which is crazy because I don't think they're gonna be that bad of a team. I just think the rest of the division has gotten that much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. so going to be interesting, but, uh, one team that I, uh, the last team that we want to talk about, uh, before we wrap up here is the Texans, right? They finished at 10 and seven. Um, and I think this, you know, we just talked about the most unimpressive team. This was the most impressive team from worst to first, basically. Right. Like mm-hmm. love the story, love the coach. We've talked about him many times. Uh, we've even got one of our friends that has admitted he is a closet Texan fan now. Um, Ooh, good yeah. for him. So, uh, but Feels uh, a little bandwagon-y. Feels yeah, it a little does. Bandwagon-y. It does. You know, I don't want to throw salt on that, but it, it kind of yeah. does. Um, you know, CJ Stroud seems to be a guy and, uh, I really like what they're doing, what they've surrounded him with. They bring in Stefan Diggs, uh, big deal for, for him. Um, but I think it just adds to what they already have, like a well-oiled machine. Um, the minute I think he starts to become a distraction, I think they're going to nip that real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, they add Joe Mixon, which is another proven veteran leader, um, I don't. I think his days in Cincinnati were kind of numbered and stuff. But him coming to Houston, maybe he gets a chance to kind of run behind a different offensive line, see what he's able to do. Because I still think he does have some talent. Uh, but the big thing for me was Daniil Hunter at defensive end because this is a guy that you're going to pair opposite Will Anderson now, uh, and this guy's a straight quarter, like a straight quarterback killer. I think. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I read a stat the other day. He's maybe up into the. 80s now 86 and a half sacks in his career like he's a beast yeah so i I just think there's nothing but upside for this team i think it's different in in in, after the year that you play your first year right like after your rookie year because everyone's got tape on you now so how does cj stroud react to that now that everyone knows what's coming or is he still able to be unpredictable right and like i think that's the million dollar question yeah i think that's you're going to really find out a lot about who CJ Stroud is, is if he put the work in in the off season. Yeah. Yep. And uh, he because, strikes me as the guy that is the dude that's putting in the work. Right. Yeah. Because um, like you and I have both said many times, like there's now a full year of tape on this guy. Yeah. Which means like, he's not going to sneak up on the guys again. He's not like everybody knows what's coming with him. Mm-hmm. And like, and you kind of saw it. And I know he was a rookie and he's playing on the road in the playoffs. You kind of saw it in the second half of that Baltimore game. Baltimore figured out who he was. Yeah. And once they figured that out, and granted, Baltimore had a hell of a defense last year, but they made his life miserable. Yeah, they did. And I I really think like that that's also it's not just adjustments from week to week, but from from half to half too, yeah. right? Because they're almost separate games that you could see played uh during yeah. those times. But yeah, we're that's going to be the big the big question. I, I think they win the division, but I want to see how that path is going to look, um, you know, going forward. I, I think the thing that I like also not worries me with Houston, but I'm curious of how they handle this. Everybody's blown smoke up their ass saying like, hey, you guys are a legit Super Bowl contender. You're going to win the division. Like, and I just want to see how they handle that as a team. Yeah, that pressure. Because I think, they're a he, young team. I think he thrives off that. But yeah, um, 
yeah, I want to see how they handle it too. I'm I'm very excited to to watch them this year, and I feel like every week they're going to be must watch football for me. Um, j- just because of how electrifying they were with Tank Dell there, then they add some of these pieces like Diggs, Mixon, Hunter. I want to see how they look. I, I think it's going to be a lot Tank of fun. Dell coming back from injury, so like yeah. should be ready to go like, and being and shot. A, and the, yeah, and that was a big reason he like Houston kind of faltered down the stretch because Tank Dell got hurt and like. Yeah, he was their number one option. Yeah, you're he right. Was shroud security blanket. He was like, and they do the big do. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I'm glad he's coming back. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, like hopefully he doesn't get shot again. That's uh, yeah. D'Amico yeah. Ryan's is a, a lot of fun to listen to as well. Like he's just a wealth of knowledge, and you realize yeah. that like some of these guys are aren't just players. Like they're brilliant people when it comes to understanding the game. Uh, and, and putting their teams in the best position to succeed. So really, I really cool. I, I think with having Demigo Ryan as your coach, I, I think that that means like they're not going to get complacent on what they did last year because he won't let them. Mm-hmm. He will not let them. Like, yeah. So. All right, man. Well, I think that that's it. We'll, uh, we'll do the trivia question and then we can wrap up. Uh, the last question we had was who had the first $100 million contract in the NFL? For a quarterback. Yeah, for a quarterback. And who was that? Old Drew Bledsoe back in 2001. Oh, yeah. I know how that ended. Yeah, we do. We do. All right. And you got a new one for him? Yeah. So uh, what four teams in the NFL don't uh, doesn't actually have a mascot? Hmm. There are four teams in the league that do not have a mascot. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Shoot the answer down below in the comment yeah. section and stuff. And we will be back. What we're going to, we're going to be back in two weeks, right? Yep. Two weeks. We'll be back. Uh, we're going to be bringing you the AFC, the NFC West. It's the last set of teams that we have the last eight uh, on the next episode, but we'll cover some stuff for baseball just as we begin to dip into, uh, it will be the last week in July, but the, the first week of August, right? Um, So very interesting time that we're going to have. But go ahead, remember, like the video, smash that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in two weeks. Yes, sir. All right, bro. Love you. Take care. Have a great day. Peace.